Hello again everyone, and welcome back. In today's video, we're going to check out one of my favorite new features of the Lino dashboard, the Cloud Firewall. The Cloud Firewall allows you to decide what traffic you want to allow into your instance, and it's a very important thing to set up. Firewalls basically give you a layer of security that you definitely want to benefit from. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so let's go ahead and get started with the Cloud Firewall feature in the Lino dashboard. Now here on my screen right now, I have a sample Linode instance that I'm going to use as the example for today's video. This is running Alma Linux, and we have a public IP address right here of 172.105.109.241. So I'm going to copy this and paste it into a new tab here. And what you're seeing is the default start page for Alma Linux. So basically what we have here is a web server and it's fully accessible. This particular server has port 80 opened up to the entire world. Now, what I'm going to do is use this as the example for setting up the firewall. Now, Alma Linux has a firewall built in. So what I've done is I just went ahead and disabled that because I wanna use the Linode firewall and because I disabled the firewall of Alma Linux, that's why I'm able to access this particular test page right now. Anyway, back here in the dashboard, let's go ahead and create our very own cloud firewall. And right here, we have a dedicated section for firewalls. Couldn't be easier. So to access the firewalls section of the dashboard, all we have to do is click on firewalls right here. Now, right now, I don't have any firewalls at all. So we're going to create our first firewall right now. Right here it says create firewall, so I'm going to click on that. And what I'm going to do is call this web firewall. We can name yours whatever you'd like. And then down here we can go ahead and choose which Linode we would like to apply this firewall to. So I'm going to choose the Alma Linux instance, this one right here. And then I'll click create firewall. So as you can see we have web firewall. It's set up, it's ready to go and we have successfully applied it to the Alma Linux instance. And now notice that it says no rules right here. So if I go back to the test page here and I refresh it, nothing's different. I can still access it. So that means if we want to actually change that, we need to create some rules so we can basically identify what is allowed and what is not allowed. I'm going to click on Web Firewall, the name, and here we have an inbound policy and as you can see, it defaults to accept. In my case, I'm going to drop all traffic by default, but I'm going to leave outbound to accept. I do want this instance to be able to download updates and things like that, but what I don't want is for outside individuals to be able to get into this particular server. So let's assume that we only want specific people from specific IP addresses to be able to access this web server instance. I'm going to scroll down and save the changes. And then back here, notice that when I refresh the page, it's still moving. You can kind of see the animation right here. It's trying to load the page, it's not able to do that. We set the traffic to drop, and what drop means is it's going to, well, drop the traffic. It's not going to send a message back and tell anyone that it's blocked. If somebody's trying to get into our server, we don't really want them to know what's happening. If we give them a message to tell them that they're blocked or what the status is, we're giving them some kind of confirmation and we don't want to do that. So for a firewall, it's best to just simply drop the traffic. Now, what I'm going to do is add an inbound rule. And right here, we have an option for a preset. And here's a list of some very common things that we can allow or disallow. So what I'm going to do is allow HTTP and we can also set a label right here. It created one for us and it's good enough for me, but if you want to customize the name, well, you can. You can choose whether the policy applies to TCP, ICMP, or UDP. In this case, it's going to be TCP. Port 80 is fine. And we're going to accept the traffic. And I'm going to go ahead and add the rule. Now I'm going to save the changes. And as you can see, I am now able to access the test page again. 
However, I mentioned that I don't really want this to be publicly accessible. So what I did was I essentially made it accessible by everyone because right here it even says all IPv4 and all IPv6. So let's go ahead and edit this rule. And what I'm going to do is actually change this to only allow my IP address. So what I'm going to do is type my public IP right here. And then at the end, I'm going to type slash 32. That's a CIDR mask, which is outside the scope of this particular video. But what slash 32 means is that it's a CIDR mask that only allows one IP address, the IP address that you typed. So that's going to effectively allow my IP address. So I'm going to add the changes. I'll scroll down. I'll save the changes. And nothing's changed in my case because, well, I added my public IP, so I am able to access it, but the difference is that other people are not able to access this unless they're coming from my IP address. And specifically, I didn't allow SSH though, so if I go down to my terminal, and I'll press the up arrow because I already had the command in my history that I used to access that instance by SSH, but I'm not able to. Now that's actually a good thing, kinda. I mean, it's bad for me right now because I can't even get into my instance, but neither can anyone else, so that's pretty cool. But I do want to allow myself to get in. I mean, after all, I am the administrator and I do need to manage this server. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and add another rule. I'm going to add SSH. And again, I'm going to allow it only from my IP address. I'll type in my IP address right here. And there it is. I'm going to accept the traffic. And again, I want to accept SSH. So now we have our second rule. I'm going to save the changes. And then back in the terminal, I'll start over here. Let's see if I can get in now. And there we go. I set up the firewall to allow my IP address for SSH and port 80 for the web server. And that's going to work out pretty well. But what I can also do is go to the Linodes tab right here and I can actually add another Linode instance to this firewall. So what that means is that you don't actually have to create one firewall per every one Linode. You can have one firewall and have five Linode instances attached to it, for example. And what that allows you to do is set up multiple firewalls, maybe one firewall for every one purpose, and then assign a Linode to each firewall as it makes sense to do so. Basically, you can get creative. So what I'll do is add another instance here. And the only other one I have anyway is the Ubuntu instance that you see here. And now I have two instances added to this particular firewall. And the firewall in the Linode dashboard is literally that easy. If you want even more information, you could check out the document that is linked to this particular video, and that'll contain even more information about the firewall service. And I highly recommend that you use the firewall service, especially to limit SSH if nothing else, because that's definitely the one thing that you want to restrict the most. So, there you go. The Cloud Firewall feature is awesome. It gives you full control over what kinds of traffic you want to allow into your Linode instance, and I highly recommend that you set it up. Let us know what you thought of this video in the comments down below, and I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching.